All right. Okay, okay, okay. So now for, uh, I want to explain. Now, these this are just techniques that I used. Um, I can't say what worked and what didn't work because I haven't actually sat down in front of a computer and seen what they loaded in and what they didn't load in. I've always been out in the field. I've never been um, behind a computer system to see everything they're doing. But um, so now we descri I described how you can set up multiple layers with multiple frequencies at multiple depths. Okay. Now, when you start to learn how to snowflake your thoughts and full spectrum your thoughts, which basically means channel a whole bunch of different channels through one specific idea or thought or entity, then you have multiple channels in a computer and in your mind that go through one point. Okay, once you do this, now you can put <clears throat> mid, you can put midpoints in all the connection points and you can start building sideways off it. And then you can start making hive minds in different locations of your mind, building your mental universe. And once you do this, you could have a set frequency that goes to that location in that time or that location in your mind and it holds that specific genre and that specific whatever. Well, th this is that's what you will develop into once you uh, once you start to learn how to do things. And yes, you can learn how to split your mind and think on multiple channels and multiple areas at once, like communicate with two or three different people at one time with different different conversations all at once. It's one hundred percent possible. We've practiced this. We I've done this done this before. I'm pretty damn good at it. Um, I love, I could, I could talk on one track of information and, and to talk telepathically, send out three message, three different messages simultaneously with my mind. Like I practice this. So, and I, you know, you could take and split, split your focus and then you have a focus down here and a focus up here. And this focus does something and that focus does something. Hence that's, that's another reason why I played music in the background as I had you read some of those mentalist lessons, because what it does is it subliminally helps you tune out one track. So you have two tracks in your mind while you're intelligently reading another track. That's just something I, I, know, I don't tell you, but that's what's going on when that happens. Okay. Um, I would purposely um, listen to music, have a TV on in the background, journal, and, you know, I would have different, different types of focus. So I would, I would train my mind on having multiple, multiple focuses. Okay. Now, so we had these layers in the mind, right? And me, I knew I, I knew that I could, I was getting information from in and out of time, but no one else, no one else knew this. Even the people that were monitoring me and connected to me, they still, they were like iffy, you know, the people that knew how to do it knew I can do it. But the other people didn't. And so they were just like, they just didn't believe me. You know, they're just like over their head. You can't do that shit. It's not possible. You can't do that. Well, <clears throat> this is what happened with me. When, when, so they, they started preaching about track work, track work. And I didn't know what it was. Well, after I told them what my track work was, because I developed an idea in the placebo effect, because they didn't let me know what it was. They just said track work. So what I started doing is I started projecting my thoughts to the year I was born. And then what I was doing was, so I did not, I was, I was, I would project my thoughts to the year I was born. I would set it in that location in my mind and I would let it, I would have an intelligent continuous thought that can continuously spin and continuously go. And I would have it build build in my mind as I live my life and monitor through my eyes, but it had nothing to do with my mind. It had nothing to do with my life path during my life. So now I have multiple minds with all the alphabet stew, every single entity from my alphabet stew, all 33 of them, yet another Mason reference, 33, in my mind. And these individuals thought we were just programming different layers in my mind and what I'm doing is I'm looping these layers from the year I was born all the way out. Why? Because this is how monks do it. You know, monks will go and meditate and 
what they'll do is they'll focus on one thing for their whole entire life. Einstein did that. He used to lay in the field, stare up at the sun, and just think about how everything was relative. Right? Einstein did the same damn thing, and now look at him. He's pretty fucking smart, huh? I mean, if you call him someone smart, you call him an Einstein, right? So, when I mentioned this to them, they were all thrown back. They're like, wait, what a second? You were looping your thoughts? And I was like, yeah, and I even have number ciphers that let me know what loop I'm on. Because, yeah, when it catches back up to me, I would analyze the information in Inception. So, I would, I would witness it all in Inception. I would just pull the data points from it. I made a computer system that could read my whole entire life really fast, pull out the data points, the important data points, synchronize the data points, same same way you're, you're just defragging a computer, same way, but we do it with my mental track work. Now I have an algorithm that pulls my data out, analyzes it for my whole life, and I shoot it back again, and I'll keep looping it, and I get indicators on what loop I'm on. You know, now, now I don't even, um, I don't even uh, worry about what loop I'm on. I'm so far past that that it's like it's it's nuts i now i'm just going to teach people how to do it well um the, and the the reason i did it this way where i didn't i didn't want it to um i kept it separate from my self-conscious mind during my life all the way up until my 33rd birthday is because i did not want to create a butterfly effect i didn't want to move anything and that's why uh a lot of the times it was when i was in a jailhouse setting and I was in a single man cell is when I project it to me. And also, or if I was in, a, in my bedroom by myself. Yeah. Did I mention too, I got a 29 on my ACT. The perfect score is 33. And I was four number, I was four off from a perfect score, 29 and 29. I was born on the 29th of November and that's my synchronistic birthday. So I have subliminal birthday jokes weaved in everything in my life and i'll start calling these things out and you guys will start to right now you probably just think i'm crazy but i'll start proving all this to you and i'll st i'm going to start sprinkling in some really simple mandala effects with numbers because numbers are kitty games i was told by a by a heavy hitter mason out, out in the northwest that numbers are just a kitty game he said get away from me with that shit he said i don't want to deal with that shit he said numbers are a kitty game. But uh, so, yeah, so that that's how I started doing it. And uh, the, the way I developed to do this was so I was born in 1986. OK, in Daytona Beach, Florida, over the third turn of Halifax Hospital. Yeah, you could say I like to go fast. You know, just an inception. OK, um, so well, anyway. So uh, what there's there's like a. a, a pretty interesting fact here with the planetary alignments okay now in the year 2020 and in the year 1987 there was a planetary uh alignment or convergence or whatever you want to say where in 1987 and in the year 2020 uh i can't remember how many aligned uh I, I, at first i thought it was nine and then it got moved to five on the internet. And then like people fuck with my internet all the time now. And people also learn how to move things around and mandala effect shit because uh, they've been listening to me. So that's why I'm teaching everybody now because fuck this shit. It's not fair that every uh, other people steal my information. So I'm teaching everybody. But um, so the when the planets align, there's there's a, a shift in gravity or a gravitational pull where you could shoot your thoughts out and your shot, your thoughts can slingshot, slingshot around all these planets. And what happens is if like pretend my head is a planet, I come around and slingshot. What it does, it uses the gravitational pull from the planet. And if you're going the speed of light, guess what? Now the gravitational pull pulls it past the threshold. And now you're starting to go faster than perceived time. And you can break the time barrier. Now, you're going around this planet, slingshotting. You can just slingshot around this planet, the next planet, the next planet. And you can keep slingshotting. And now, you're not just slingshotting during the planets. You got a planet here, 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 here. And they're all in a line. Okay? Now, each one, due to its mass, 
it's creating like a laser beam on top of it of gravitational pull. So you could you could literally slingshot yourself towards the, the, the largest planet. So now, and not only that, in the year 2020, uh, everyone got together and meditated while this planetary alignment was going on. I'm sure lots of individuals that are on the same type of networks as me. So we've all cascaded our information out into the universe. Well, I decided to send it back to myself as well as cascade it out. And I'll go into theories on how um, I believe that the FRB signals that are coming back to our planet, there's the FRB signals. Well, I like to play Frisbee golf. And of course, we would name it the FRB signals if we, kind of, if we slung shot our information out and brought our signals back, right? I know. And then another like joke is, what was it, uh, 12 days before I was born, an empty spaceship landed in Alaska with no alien on it. Could that have been someone else trying to play Frisbee golf? That's, that's a joke, though. I don't know. But, uh, you know, sometimes I just spin it off to make discredit myself just so just to throw you guys off, too. But uh, for real, that track work was true. Um, and I will start to um, try to, to d develop y'all's minds and teach y'all how to do it on your own. Um, look up the planetary alignments. Now you're going to have to um, learn how to stretch your mind out and project your thoughts back to yourself in 2020. And then I could direct you to project your, your thoughts out into the planetary alignment. And then you could have a, you could have subliminal communication anywhere you would like. But, uh, that's just some things that, uh, I wanted to mention now. And then I just got another video, this, this next video, it's like, it's a, tor it's a torture log, but it's spoken clearly and to the point. And, uh, I believe that there's valid information in there that you guys would like. So, um, and I'm going to start teaching at the beginning of each of this, the next lesson, I'm going to go in and, and start talking about a book I wrote as a baseline before I went to Northampton County. And before I worked with, with Dennis Gordon, cause we set a baseline. So I would only be positive. So we knew how my mind was before I went to go work for these individuals before we started our investigation. It's like one o'clock in the afternoon, um, <clears throat> almost two. Uh, you know, I work nights, so that's when I get up. <clears throat> I got about an hour, two hours of my own time, and then I just go right back to work. I work to work. Uh, I really don't have any money to show for it. I just keep going through the system, the system of occupational work. Don't, I don't get it anywhere. For two years now, I've busted my ass every single day of my life in this town. And I have no money to show for it at all. All I have is a bad attitude to show for it. It sucks. <laughs> I don't understand why, why I have such a bad attitude towards everything why these outside entities insist on just tormenting and hurting people so much in this area. I'm not sure. You know, a lot of people in this area think there's some sort of big, thick witchcraft or like some sort of like demonic entity in this area, or at least that's um, some of the rumors I hear around, at least when I was in jail. But it's these people with these synthetic machines and they're playing tricks on people, mental tricks and mind tricks and making them think there's ghosts in the area that are tormenting them and shit. But it's really just these people with these mind reading machines that they learned how to tune into other aspects of the mind other than, other than internal dialogue. <laughs> so, but yeah, but I mean, it's really hard trying to find someone with credentials that knows what I'm talking about. Because if I say this, just the normal people and everyone will just look at me and think I'm fucking crazy. But this is a real thing. It really, people can connect someone's body to an Xbox controller and use the joysticks to walk them around if they have a map of their mind and know how to use it the right way. It's pretty fucking scary. Well, that's what they've been doing to me for two years. The psychic mob. The fucking local police officers here, they've been fucking battling me back and forth between these two entities and between other entities. And it's like they don't give a fuck about 
the quality of my life or anything about my life. They only care about getting back at each other. They're playing like cops and robbers or like mob wars and they're using me as a puppet in between. They don't give a fuck about my life. They don't care if I go to jail. They don't care if I don't have money. They don't care if I get physically hurt. They don't care if everyone, if they separate me from all my family members. They don't care if they separate me from all my friends. It's two years now I lived in this neighborhood. I'm a happy-go-lucky person. I don't have not one goddamn friend. <laughs> and I'm sitting here intelligently telling you this. And so for the next month, I'm going to intelligently try to work on building a friend's base. <clears throat> and we'll see. Now, Northampton County, the county I'm in, they're trying to say I'm crazy because I brought this stuff to their attention. They tried to have a doctor forcefully have me take medication against my free will. And then they, um, <clears throat> and then they tried to forcefully have me sign medical release paperwork. And my probation officer threatened the doctor saying he was going to subpoena, which isn't really a threat. It was just the, the manner and demeanor that he said, spoke to the doctor, which labeled it as a threat. It wasn't, it wasn't actually the actual act of act, saying he's going to subpoena because he has the legal right. I, I'm assuming to subpoena medical records, I guess. It's my legal right not to release them, but I guess he has a legal right to fucking get them no matter what. Why do we even have a medical release if he could just get all the medical records anyway, right? And these doctors, they were boycotting me. They must have, they must have been told the story about me before I got there because they already had a detailed list of stuff written down about me before I ever even spoke to these doctors. So, I mean, this doctor, Alex Thomas, he mislabeled the fuck out of me and misdiagnosed the shit out of me. So, we better go and uh, have a little, uh, a little malpractice fucking investigation on that guy. Because if people are telling him what to put in his notes, then maybe we should go and fucking ask him who the fuck the real doctor is. Is it the probation officers or is it the fucking doctor? That's what I want to fucking know. And as you can see, there's other people channeling through me that are getting very pissed off. See, it might look like it's multiple personality or split personality or like a little schizo or Tourette's, but I'm actually connected to a, a collective where all of our minds are connected like walkie talkies and we can communicate with our internal thought process like a walkie talkie. And what this does is this pushes your conscience down. So now your outer dialogue, it's just like a game. Everything you speak out loud, it's like a fucking mentalist game because the words you speak out loud put things into play. So now everything you think down here is it, it, it gets replaced or paradox to like what your external thoughts would actually be because now everyone can hear your thoughts on the inside because I'm connected to a hive or a collective where there's synthetic bots that run it. Like we've been building these bots and training these bots to do certain techniques, certain aspects, be a salesman, be a, a shaman, be a love guru, be a quantum physicist, be a, an astronaut. I mean, it sounds like little kid shit, but we fine tune and detailed programmed each bot. And now we have mental assisters that assist us. And we have facilitators that, that oversee organic human facilitators either two or four facilitators that oversee all the bots that are running, that are, that are assisting my mental mind. They take a mental map of my mind and they track all the neuro, they map and track all the neuro uh, channels. And not only that, but then they say, uh, this channel gets you from here. Well, they say, well, let's do this channel, this channel, this channel. And it's all, it gets you from point A to point B, from here to there, but it takes this channel, same, same, but different. So you're getting every little aspect or every little characteristic that, oh, characteristic um, that you could use to get there. They're simulating every single one. Now they have a map, mental map of everything you do <clears throat> and like a hundred different ways to get there. 
I said like because you know, there's no real way to put a number on it because they're not just mapping my mind, they're mapping everybody else's minds and then they're synchronizing. Whatever works for me can work for them. They just have to rearrange the position or re-simulate the frequency. They can literally just record your mind and whatever you did in it, like whatever you're doing, like natural experience. Say I, I was having sexual intercourse with a woman and I go and I get aroused now they have a recording of me getting aroused now they can replay that and anytime they want I could be in public and next thing you know yeah it's a little little comical but they also put the urges and sensations of being like attracted and like being infatuated they could re replicate everything it's an, all they gotta do is tune into the, the exact position and spot of the mind where you're where you're experiencing those experiences and they record the frequencies that are going on and they just project they just replay those frequencies back into your mind that's how simple it is and now these people have been doing these this full spectrum type of mental mapping for two years now so now i have like a mental assister machine that i'm connected to that they could turn it on and off. I'm not like full time connected to it, but now I have every neuro pathway. I'm going to school for psychology, so this is going to be excellent if I could get all the bad guys out of out of my situation and all the tormentors out. This will be an excellent platform for me to be a psychologist because I'm going to school for psychology right now. But um, so the real reason I was getting on here. I figured I'd prime you up with some information so you guys know that I'm not off my rocker. <clears throat> um, I'm just trying to intelligently explain this stuff and I'm not a professional, but I've lived this every single day for the past two or three years. And there's also connections where the government has used these machines on me since then. And once you, once you, um, once your mind picks up on these frequencies and know what they are and how they're used in your mind it's like your mind is like a natural shazam it can pick up any time in your past if you look at your memory when these frequencies or frequencies that were similar these hypnosis frequencies or these suggestible frequencies were used on me or on you or anybody once you start to acknowledge and adapt and realize and feel the texture of these frequencies because if they're using a map or a recording from someone else's mind and then they put it in yours, it's not always pleasant. It's just a little off and you could tell and you could tell it's not you. And you could also tell the acute emotional profile, which is like the, the small little tips that make each profile um, directed or tuned to each specific person or entity. Basically, you know it's me when I'm talking because you know my voice, you know the way my voice sounds, you know the way my voice reverberates, you know the way it feels, and you know my attitude and my mood that I, that I subliminally project. You can tell that it's me when I'm talking. This is, this is the, the characteristics of what, what I mean when I say acute emotional profile. So when someone else, when they project something else in you too, you could also, uh, you know, you become, I, a type of like shape shifter type of person because they, they can also replicate the circulatory and the, and the, the muscle shapes, the shape of your muscle because they can regulate your circulatory and um, also your nervous system, your peripheral and your central nervous systems to manipulate the shapes of your body, the shapes of your face, all this. And they also can tune into the back of your um, eyes and somewhere up in here and here and right in the back. I don't, I'm not sure. I've never actually looked up um, information on this. Um, in the beginning, I was trying to not look up information because I was going to see how much I could learn without ever opening up a book. <clears throat> and I'll tell you what, I know a fucking lot. And I would like to speak with people with real creden credentials to cross check my information and to um, to prove that 
the psychic bomb or someone fucking pump me out with all this information to teach you guys or learn or something. I'm getting chills right now. Whenever I do something good, I get goosebumps or chills and it's synthetically sent to me. It's like an indicator saying, um, saying yes. They're trying to, I believe that there's people that are, that were caught up as victims like me and, and there's no way for them to get out. And as I cross their paths, they learn mentalist techniques to subliminally program me to come out and tell the story for them. So, so people can help them out of there. I'm getting goosebumps. They're some of my best friends and I'm watching, I've watched them get fucking puppeteered around. They make them be drug dealers. They make them do all sorts of shit. I mean, I'm not saying these people weren't bad people in the beginning and then they just didn't, they realized they wanted to get out of it, but they can't get out of it. Some of these people, in my opinion, I don't think they can get out of it because they're stuck on these computer systems that these 